you want to impress all your friends too, by the way, on Instagram. But I'm doing this for you guys, so I hope you enjoy it and maybe you guys learn something out of it and gives you some motivation to get out there and tackle some projects of your own. What's happening guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a video which I'm, to be quite fair with you, I'm really surprised after almost 40 parts, we have not done one of these yet. So as you can see from the title today, we are doing a how-to video. I'm gonna really show you guys kind of the ins and outs and just a start to finish process of doing a sheet metal, thin sheet metal repair um, on a small scale. So let's just go ahead and hop into the GTR and get started. So for anyone that is new and uh, joining us for the first time, this is our 1992 Nissan GTR that I am restoring here in house. And uh, we've came a very long way. So we are currently at the final stages of all of our rust uh, repairs and stuff like that. So that leads us to today's video. In the last couple episodes, I actually just went ahead and we installed the right side, the driver's side quarter panel. Now I'm just finalizing everything here on the passenger side. So we have a few repairs to be, to be done. So today we're going to knock out this little spot down here. Now just off the rip looking at it, it doesn't all seem too bad. However, we're going to go ahead and delete this little drain hole down here since we have no need for it anymore and as well as the one up top. So let's go ahead. I'm going to show you guys what I've already got going and uh, we'll get this knocked out pretty quickly. So before we get started, let me show you guys the tools that we're going to use to get this job done. We've got a pretty basic assortment here. This is the basic stuff that I'm gonna be using here today for what you guys are gonna see apart from my welder and we'll get to that. So just some tin snips because currently we are using a 20 gauge sheet metal. As you guys can see, that is the sheet that I'm working off of. The best place to go ahead and get your sheet metal guys is a metal supply store. I highly recommend you guys avoid like a Home Depot or Lowe's for those that live in the US. They charge a lot more than what you get. So just keep that in mind. I paid about $30 for this two by four sheet of 20 gauge steel. So uh, a heck of a deal compared to what you find at the retail stores. So my best friend when it comes to small repairs is gonna be some tape. The tape is gonna act as a template. All I'll do right off the bat before I even get started is cover the entire area that we're gonna be chopping out and replacing in tape. After that's accomplished, go ahead and use yourself a ruler, a straight edge, or whatever your plans are to shape it up with a Sharpie. I like to use a nice little fine tip just because it's more accurate and it helps you kind of see the lines a little cleaner. And you'll end up with the sheet of tape coming off and you can then apply it and transfer it to your sheet of metal. So as you guys can see, the tape just transfers right over to the sheet. We cut it out based off of our lines where we want to uh, replace. And before you know it, you come up with a piece that looks brand new. Now the belt file is a little added bonus. If you guys have one, great. But if you don't, it's all right. You can make do without one. Just a quick explanation, of course, you know, I'm just trying to keep things informative for you guys here. Pretty straightforward, but you would like to have a vise as well, especially if you're adding in a little break or a bend like this. You just pop it in the vise, clamp it up, and you bend it to where you'd like it. Super straightforward, nice and simple. Obviously, if you have large pieces, having a larger break can work, but I've made a lot of pieces with this vise here. It's a six inch vise, it gets a lot of work done. So now with the easy part done, let's go ahead and get back to the car and start cutting it up. So what I like to do is just take your piece and just transfer it right over to where you're going to be going ahead and replacing. And uh, that's going to be your cut line. So now you're just going to transfer over and outline the shape. So now with the uh, old piece cut out, you can kind of fit up your new piece. You may notice that you might need to do a little bit of trimming here and there, but obviously uh, you try and keep that to a minimum, right? So if anything, I like to keep a nice little air gap between my panel. You don't want it to be perfectly buttered up. You can, don't get me wrong, but personally, I think you just get easier, better penetration by leaving a little bit of a gap, especially if you're doing some MIG welding. So uh, with this repair, I'm gonna be doing some MIG. And maybe for the next one, I can do some TIG just to kind of show you guys the differences. But uh, yeah, this is looking pretty good. If anything, I might just chop away a little bit up here at this corner. And then uh, we'll go ahead and clean up this edge here a little bit with all the extra uh, from our cut. And uh, we'll go ahead and clamp it in place and I'll show you guys how the welding procedure goes. So this is where I'll use my, uh, my belt file. You can use a regular file or anything you guys find that works, but uh, just to go ahead and clean up your edges here. So 
So one thing I can already see is that my bend down here is not aggressive enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and match this uh, to the uh, existing bend. We'll be good to go. So I do definitely recommend these style vice grips. These ones specifically are the super cheap ones from uh, Harbor Freight. So uh, they just work well because they have a nice flat uh, gripping surface and they're not gonna kind of dig and mar up your pieces. So what I like to do is just kind of mount them in positions on each side. That way everything is nice and flush, level and fitting up really nice. And then just make sure you're all adjusted with your bends, how you want it to sit. And before you guys know it, man, we'll be ready to throw some welds in here. Just a quick close up so you guys can kind of see how everything looks. Clamped up nice, lining up with all of our lines. It's gonna weld up really good. All right guys, let's just do a quick chat about the welder that we're gonna be using here. This is just an Everlast Power iMig 140E. If you guys are looking to get into MIG welding, definitely go ahead and get yourself one of these units. I highly recommend it. Now this is one of their old units. I believe the new unit now comes with a nice LCD display. Uh, display. But this thing has been a trusty steed and has gotten so much work for me done over the years, I can't complain. As far as the gas flux, I know I get a lot of questions regarding my gas and stuff like that. I like to keep it around 10 CFH. That's my recommendations. You can go a little bit more, you can go a little bit less, but for me, I like to keep it at 10 CFH. Quick easy way to check your gas flow is flip the welder on and just tap the trigger on the welder. You guys can see it kind of hovers right in that zone. We're perfectly set. And the adjustment is just this knob right here. All right guys, so just to get things started, you don't want to just go ahead and start laying welds down. What I like to do is just tack it in as many places that you can and make sure everything fits up as flush as physically possible. That's the whole objective here with these OEM style repairs. You want it to fit up as best as you can before you even lay your first weld down. Obviously we have our ground here. You wanna be grounded up to the metal that you are welding. Now, as far as the tack weld, I just kind of lightly, you will see. It's easier if you guys just watch and learn, you know? So just like that, just quick. You don't wanna be super hot and heavy with it. Just a nice quick adhesion and that's good. So this little spot right here, obviously don't do this without gloves. It gets hot really quick, but you can feel it. It's fitting up flush, so we already know we're off to a good start. Let's go ahead and add one more down here. Beautiful. So now let's say you guys are a little bit unhappy with how things are fitting. Let me show you guys what you want to do. Now I guess this would be a little bit more of an advanced tooling set, but maybe if you have it or have access to a hammer and dolly set, this is the Eastwood set, fairly reasonable, but you know, just all you would do is take your dolly, place it somewhere in the flat, you know, and just kind of hammer it. I'm pretty good with my fitment, so I, need to, I don't need to touch it, but that's kind of, you guys get the idea. Um, so you gotta get everything fitted up how you'd like to, and you're good. So here's my final little spot that I just wanna seal up before we get to welding and we should be looking really good. All right guys, so from this point, if you're feeling good and you like how everything is fitting up, you go at your, you basically got the green light now. So we have a good amount of tacks that way things aren't gonna move around and warp on us. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and start stitching this up. Let me show you guys like I get it's it's easier for you guys to watch and learn instead of you hear me yabber and talk about it. So you'll kind of get a sense for how things go together here pretty quickly. Oh, okay, so you're gonna get this right. I um, sometimes you just have the torch positioned in a wrong spot. I blew right through the metal, man. So we're just gonna kind of forget about that right now, and we're gonna move on to another spot. I kind of like to leave those blowouts to the final end, but look, they happen. It is what it is. It's not a big deal. Do not panic. Shadow's really messing with me. I'll be honest. I'm trying to get a good, some good lighting for you guys, but it's messing with me. Bump up the wire feed a little bit. All 
All right, so you guys can see, this is the uh, the mess before it gets all nice, right? So you guys, uh, you can see it got a couple blowouts. One, two, three, not a big deal. What I like to do is just clean up all these welds first, get everything all hammered up and dollied so it's nice and flat. But we're now we're gonna go ahead and just buzz that down, clean up those welds. I'll show you guys how it looks at the end, but the tool, like we mentioned earlier, is gonna be this guy over here. 36 grip pad, two inch disc. Does work. So the goal with this is to take your time because you can actually ruin everything very quickly by cleaning it up. You don't really wanna be using a huge angle grinder with the blending disc on there. You sure you can do that for bigger panels and big repairs, but for stuff like this, you're gonna be grinding away other areas without even realizing it, and before you know it, you'll be busted right through and creating way more work for yourself. So find something with a two inch disc, two, three inch max, but honestly guys, like I told you, this is the tool that really comes in handy. If you guys can get yourself a belt file, doesn't have to be electric, can be a pneumatic. They just make the job 10 times easier. So it's gonna be a mix between these two, but we get the job done either way. You guys can see this is truly a labor of love. It's uh, it's not a quick process, man. It takes time, but you know what I mean? It's, it's worth it in the end. So I'm gonna keep on buzzing this away and I'll keep you guys posted. All right, this is the next phase. You guys can see we got them pretty much dressed down. Take your time, trust me guys, do not rush this man. You're gonna regret it if you do. So now we're gonna go ahead and got everything all flattened up again and we're gonna go ahead and fill up my tiny little pinholes and my blowouts that I missed. And uh, we'll go ahead and clean up for the last time, clean up the backside, and we'll move on to the next spot. Now, another little beginner technique that you guys can use if you do have a little blowout when you're going ahead and welding your panels up is get yourself a little piece of copper, whether it be a copper plate, a copper plug, whatever it is, just go ahead and get yourself some copper and place it behind the weld and behind the panel. Basically, the point of the copper is, uh, well, the, the weld itself will not stick to the copper. So it's just gonna act as like a backing plate and a little heat sink. That way you can kind of just feed the wire in and it just kind of stops it and just kind of melts it into a pool. Um, definitely a, a good tip and good trick to use if you guys come into a situation where you keep blowing holes, if you can't turn your welder down anymore, or uh, if you're just kind of getting frustrated, just go ahead and get yourself some copper. In fact, here is a good example. I've actually got it here under the welder myself, just in case. Just uh, This is just some tube and it's just been crushed up. You guys can kind of see. And I uh, just made myself a little flat bar at the end so we can go ahead and slap it against something. And uh, it does make a big difference if you need it. So go ahead and try it out. All right, guys, so you guys can see we are at the back side. Sorry about the poor lighting. It is kind of dark under here. But yeah, so you guys can see we're, uh, you can, I guess you could if you really wanted to leave this, but like I said, we're not into that. We want to make things look absolutely seamless. So same thing goes for back here. Just go ahead and dress things up. And obviously you guys can see you want to make sure you have good penetration all around and have no breakthroughs and no, uh, no spots of light shining through, which we don't. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same techniques to clean up this backside. And I'll show you guys the final product. So you guys can see you've got this to about like 95% don't need to go all the way. The front side is kind of looking really good. If you want to impress all your friends too, by the way, on Instagram, go ahead and get yourself a little, uh, you know, uh, a DA or whatever, and just go ahead and hit it like this. And then you can brag to all your Instagram friends on how good your repair came out. <laughs> So the only thing left remaining for this final piece down here is just to go ahead and kind of trim up this flange. And that's it for that spot. Moving on to the next. All right, well, that's going to be it for the MIG today. We are moving on to the TIG, just so we have a little bit of variety and switch it up a little bit just to show you guys both realms and how to go about it. You guys can see we've already got our plug in place and uh, the fitment is really good. You want to make sure with the TIG that it's about as flush as you can possibly get. Uh, with the MIG, you can get away with having a little bit more gap, but even 
Even right now, we're kind of at the border, but we should be able to make it work. So I've got it held in place by a little stitch weld magnet. Those things are great. I'll have them also linked down below for you guys to, uh, to purchase if you'd like. They definitely come in handy. So let's go ahead. Let's fire up the machine. And I'll show you guys how we weld this up. All right, guys. So we're about ready. Everything is all prepped up just as it was for the MIG. And uh, I actually ditched the magnet because sometimes the piece is so small, the magnet can actually affect the arc and kind of make it a little bit crazy. For smaller pieces like this, uh, if you can, just go ahead and clamp it up the traditional way. So everything is all ready to go. I've actually got the machine all fired up. Let me go ahead and walk you through the, uh, I guess, the settings and we'll get to it. All right, so here is the uh, TIG machine that I'm working with, guys. This is the Prime Weld 225. Now, this machine is great. I will have it linked down below if you guys are interested as well. So, obviously, we're doing steel. So, we're on DC. We have pulses off. Our post flow setting, we'll kind of leave it. Eh, it's about five, six seconds right now. That's about good. So, just a quick rule of thumb of how to gauge how many amps to run on whatever you're welding. So, let's say you're running and welding something that's an eighth inch thick. That's 0.125 of an inch. So, you're going to want 125 amps. So, for something that's about 16th of an inch, give or take, you know, we're going to want about 60 ish. Now, uh, obviously, with the pedal, you have full control of the amps at all times. You have basically a range from zero to 60 amps now, so you can kind of mess with that zone. You'll find the sweet spot, and if you need to adjust, obviously, you can go back to your machine and adjust and add some more amperage if need be. But I'm going to start at 63 amps for this thin sheet metal repair. That should do us just fine. Let's get to it. Also, before I forget, just running a number seven gas cup lens. I do have a nice... Uh, Furic cup, but we're not in need of that at the moment. For gas flow, we're gonna be about 15 to 20, and that should do us just fine. Obviously, we have the separate wire to fill on our own. I'll show you guys how this works. Let's go ahead and weld this up. Same thing, make sure you get it all fitted up how you'd like it to. And we're gonna go ahead and throw some tacks in them. Hopefully you guys can see the panel as well. I find that the hardest part of the TIG uh, metal repair stuff is just the initial tacks. And then once you kind of get that started, I feel like it kind of goes a little bit smoother. Let me know how you guys, if you agree with me on that. I feel like the initial tack, the initial mounting, if the equipment is not like perfectly flush, you know, you'll have a little bit of struggle, but you kind of just have to, it's a much more advanced technique. You just have to realize how it all works and just kind of work with it how it wants to be uh, maneuver really so damn it oh see <laughs> tig is tough man because if you're not comfortable and not completely set up you dip your tongue. I'm looking how much more time this is taking. Am I right? So I'm just trying to show you guys. Now look. Now I got to go back to the bench, grind the tungsten down, clean it up. So it's um, it's definitely a labor of love. But uh, you know, I just want to show you guys kind of both sides. I am so uncomfortable right now, bro. Oh. <laughs> Definitely not my best work, but we're sealed up. So I'm gonna let it cool for a second. I'll go ahead and grind it down and clean it up. I'll show you guys the final result. And there we have it. I'd say that came out pretty nice. It's a little bit tricky just because of how tight this little crevice is. I wasn't able to get my two inch die grinder in there. So I was, a set, I was pretty much limited to my belt sander, but I do believe it came out nice. Like I said, guys, take your time. 
the most time consuming part is uh, not just the welding, but the finishing. If you really care about making sure things come out OEM and kind of seamless, you really want to take your time there because like I said, you can create a lot more work for yourself very quickly. I would also like to mention that the TIG method is way more time consuming and quite in all, in all honesty, I really should have just MIG that, uh, that patch up right there because there's really no metal shaping going on. It really wasn't worth it. But I just wanted to show you guys the uh, procedure and how things go and the difference and stuff like that. I would definitely recommend for small repairs like this, just MIG it, you know, you'll be totally fine. I just recommend MIG and not flux. You, you, you don't want to go gasless. You can, I know some people do, but I really wouldn't recommend it. I definitely would prefer you guys go with the MIG. But if I missed anything, drop, the, drop any questions or comments down below or shoot me a DM on Instagram. I'll, I'll happily chat with you and we can talk about some stuff. Uh, happy, happy to help you guys out. So, um, but all in all, I think these repairs came out pretty sweet. Let me know what you guys think. So for the final repair, we've got this little corner piece right here. This one will be a good, we'll get a good sense of metal shape and I'll, con I'll show you guys how we, how we form this up, but you can see we're missing this little connection piece. So all of this, actually I've already rebuilt this, in, this entire flange. So we just have to finish it off here down at the bottom. Let me brainstorm for a moment and we'll get back into this. I just kind of ground down and cleaned up the whole little area down here and everything is all good obviously besides this little spot right here. So um, kind of hard to tell with the lighting. I do apologize, but this, this essentially just comes right here and joins up and just, we just create this little corner piece right here. So I've kind of marked it out in blue. So next thing I'm going to go ahead and get me some tape and I'm going to walk you guys through this entire process. Let's go. All right, so you guys can see just a rough little outline of the shape and what's going on here, where the bends are, where things are happening, and uh, that's kind of going to be our template. Now, you can kind of go ahead and layer however many layers of tape you want, but I just keep it simple. The tape ain't cheap, man. So we're going to go ahead now try and keep it all together in one piece, take it off, and it may not look like anything right now, but that's the piece we need. So let's get over to the, uh, let's get over to the bench and start making it up. All right, so here we go. We're over to our bench, got our 20 gauge sheet metal. We're basically just gonna transfer our drawing, our beautiful drawing to the metal. And I always like to cut it a little bit bigger. It's a whole lot easier to remove material than it is to add it. So just keep that in mind. Anytime you're making something, guys, always make it a little bit bigger than you think. So now that this is a kind of a beginner DIY video, I'm actually gonna do this a little bit differently because for some, this is gonna be an extremely confusing part, but we're gonna make it a little bit easier. Now to shape this up, making it out of one piece definitely will take some time. You know, you're gonna to have to have some tools and this and that. So without having all those tools, what we're gonna do is just do it out of two pieces. So what I like to do is we're gonna go ahead and cut along our line here. And now this line kind of fades off into this edge. And now you get everything you guys want to do, think before you do, right? So there we go. So now it looks like we've just made a complete mess of our, of our piece, but let's go ahead to the car now. So now we've got this piece here and we've got this piece here. So what we can do is we can now form this bend. You guys can kind of see how I'm making it easier by going in two pieces. So uh, little by little, Luckily, with it being so thin, you can kind of move it and maneuver it pretty, pretty easily. So you guys can already see we've already shaped up pretty decent right here. And then this piece is just going to kind of come in like that. And we're going to trim off the excess, weld it all together. And before you know it, guys, it's going to start shaping up. All we're doing is just, like I said, green this little corner right here. And I'll show you guys how it, how it shapes up. And you'll, be, you'll be impressed, man. It may not look like nothing right now, but trust me. This is how you do it. Now this step kind of varies per job, but uh, sometimes I like to keep the piece in there until everything is made up, but sometimes I like to just get it out of the way. So this time, we're just gonna go ahead and get it out of the way. Ah! 
This is the first piece in place. It needs to be trimmed up a little bit, but it's in its place. This is, like I said, much more of a beginner entry level way. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some tacks just to get that in place. And um, you know, we're happy with the fitment and then uh, we'll shape it up some more and keep on progressing. All right, I gotta say, man, <laughs> filming this makes the process 10 times longer. It's just crazy, to, it's just wild. But I'm doing this for you guys, so I hope you enjoy it and maybe you guys learn something out of it and gives you some motivation to get out there and tackle some projects of your own. So you guys can see, we've uh, we've now pieced this together pretty well. Still a little bit of trimming that needs to be done, but you can see, uh, sorry about all the blue paint everywhere, but so we got that piece in there and then we also have this piece up here to finish off and cap off the front. So everything is lining up and looking really good. This is not the way I would normally go about it, but uh, this is definitely the more, the more entry and uh, user friendly way. So now I'm gonna get the welder back out and you guys know the deal, man. We'll start tacking this thing in place and get it shaped up and fit it out perfectly. But so far so good. So you can see the fitment is all lining up exactly how we want. So we're nice and happy with it. Now I'm going to go ahead and just buzz down those tack welds that I just welded up right there. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and final weld everything so you guys can kind of get a sense of how it all looks. We're just about finished up here. Final stretch. Looking good. All right, guys, well, what do you think? Pretty happy with it, pretty happy with it. Very time consuming, so make sure you guys give yourself plenty of time. However, filming stuff always like doubles or triples the time on everything. But again, I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions or comments, like I said, feel free to drop them down below and I'll be happy to get back to you. Uh, drop me an email, shoot me an Instagram DM. Like I said, I'm, I'm here to help you guys. So if you have anything, I'm here. But I think we knocked out this whole area very well. Things came out beautifully, you know, three nice solid repairs. I'm gonna do this one back here off camera because well, like I said, I've, I feel like we've, we've already gotten a good taste of everything. I don't wanna bore you guys. But um, yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. And uh, man, this thing's coming out incredible. Let me know what you guys thought of this little how-to video. I'm a little bit rusty, you know, with my how-to, so maybe it wasn't as informative as maybe it should have been, but like I said, let me know if you guys have any questions or concerns. But I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching today. If you guys have not yet subscribed, go ahead and do so, man. Toss a like on the video and throw a super thanks down below. I appreciate you, and uh, I'll see you guys all in the next one, man. Take care. Later.